for you. This is a kid approved program, of course, because it's Healthy Start. And this webinar is designed to speak to parents. And so tonight's overview about sleep disordered breathing is going to be coming to you from that perspective. Do you have a child or like me, grandchildren, that you are noticing some things that make you just a little bit uncertain and you're wishing you had a better understanding and thinking maybe we should be doing something to help? Well, tonight you're going to find out how you can help, what is wrong, and what can be done. And you're going to hear about it from a doctor who has vast experience. This is Dr. Rod Willie, and he is going to be sharing with you a lot of information about sleep disorder breathing. But before we get to that, I want to take a minute and tell you a little bit about Dr. Earl Bergerson. Dr. Bergerson is a board certified orthodontist, and he's really behind the operations that you're going to be learning about. We call him the world changer, and why not? Because he has spent 50 years dedicated to developing a series of removable orthodontic and orthopedic appliances that truly have changed the world. He founded Orthotain back in 1967. Now that's 50 years and we just celebrated and he was honored in several respects for his contribution to the health of children all over the world. He was also a professor of dentistry at Northwestern Dental School when the dental school was still open. And in the same area, he had his own orthodontic private practice for 37 years in Chicago. This is the big number. He has actually treated over three and a half million children all over the world. Here's another big number. It puts him in at number two because he holds currently still active 514 US domestic and international patents for this series of appliances. Number two, where does that come from? Well, number one would be Thomas Edison. So as we are told from our patent attorney, that makes him number two in the world for the development of patents, a remarkable genius and nothing shy of that. So in addition to that, he has delivered over 500 seminars around the world. He has been peer reviewed and articles in over 80 publications and he holds 80 monographs, a remarkable genius of a man. Now, as far as these appliances, well, they are FDA cleared. This is Health Canada certified, which is the equivalent of a class two medical device. There are no BPAs, there's no latex, there is no silicone, the appliances and the containers that they come in are also antimicrobial. So there's nothing funny going on here. Everything that your child would put in their mouth is going to do nothing but help them. It is ISO certified and of course, made in America. All right, so now let me tell you about our presentation tonight because we're really excited to have Dr. Rod Willie on board. Now he has the, been the developer and the founder of the Koala Centers for Sleep Disorders, which is a national franchise, which right now counts 19 locations. That's a really, really impressive operation. So he is the developer and founder of the Illinois Institute of Dental Sleep Medicine, Koala Affiliates in Dunlap and Galesburg, Illinois. The locations are providing oral appliance therapy for patients suffering with obstructive sleep apnea and TMD. He's developed and instituted a unique treatment protocol for treating OSA and TMD in the dental office. So much now happens in the, that's why we call them the oral physicians. He is the CEO and owner of Maple Shade Dental Group for 25 years, and that's been a multi-specialty practice. He's had over 30,000 patients in his base with seven dentists, a huge team, and 72 staff members. Owner and developer of Embassy Dental Laboratories. He's got his own lab, a full service dental lab providing in-house services as well as services for the local dentist. He's a national speaker and an educator. He's really good at that, what he's been doing for many, many years. Great to have the experience, great to have the wisdom, but it's what you do to impart that to other dentists that really takes this out to the world and helps everybody get acquainted. I'm in communications for this company. That's what we do. We tell the story. We want people to be aware that it's available and how they can get it for their family. Education, undergrad biology at La Sierra University, La Sierra, and Loma Linda University out in Loma Linda, California, and postdoctoral training in orthodontics and the U.S. Department of, or the U.S. DI, that's United States Dental Institute. So he's a diplomat, he's highly credentialed in sleep, TMD, and oral facial pain, and he's just got a great presentation for us tonight. So Dr. Rod Willie, I am going to just have to turn it over to you tonight uh, for our 
presentation on sleep disordered breathing to the to the parent. So I'm going to let you go ahead and take over this screen and share your wisdom with all of our parents and medical professionals that are tuned in and those that are joining us on Facebook Live. Good. Well, I would like to welcome everybody to the seminar. Thank you all for attending. I am so excited to partner with Healthy Start. We have with the Koala Center for Sleep Disorders, a new section called Koala Kids, uh, Pediatric Sleep Airway Development Center. And I am so excited about this tonight. What a time to be a dentist. I can tell you as of what we have learned over the past 30 years, 20 years, Dr. Bergerson, being a major player in this, others that are there to allow us to be able to be at this point in the juncture of obstructive sleep apnea and sleep disordered breathing in general. We're gonna talk about that here for a bit here tonight, but I would like to, first of all- Sleep is a basic whoop, necessity of love. Let's come back here. I want to, first of all, talk to you about what happens in obstructive sleep apnea. As adults, obstructive sleep apnea is affected, affecting many, many people. In fact, the new statistic is 54 million Americans with obstructive sleep apnea, 85% going undiagnosed. That's a whole bunch of people. Used to be 18 million, that has been moved up due to the obesity epidemic in this country, as well as many other things that we're going to talk about here tonight and developmental things that happen as a child that carry on through our adult life. One thing as I've treated over 3,000 patients with obstructive sleep apnea that I have found is that there is a very, very big correlation between narrow arches, high vaulted roofs, long pallets, and obstructive sleep apnea. At least 80% of people with apnea have these issues creating then some nasal breathing problems and a lot of other things. So why are all these things there, these airway problems that are connected in adults, and is there something we can do about it when we are growing as children to correct some of these things to where we're not having to correct them with apparatuses like CPAPs or oral sleep appliances in adults? or maybe doing a surgery where we take away the old uvula, the old flapper in the back of the mouth that's rattling when there's so much snoring, when we can allow adults to be able to be in the same bed once again because of the snoring. It's been shown that snoring alone causes fragmented sleep some 27 times an hour, according to Mayo Clinic, but the person within ear distance of snoring, it's 21 times an hour. It's a big deal, and a lot of that happens not as an adult, but it's set up actually as a child. So I would like to show you a very short video right now that explains what happens with obstructive sleep apnea and sleep disordered breathing. And if I can get this to go, here we go. Sleep is a basic necessity of life, but even more important is breathing. When you sleep, air travels through your nose and mouth, down the throat, and into your lungs. The narrowest part of the airway is at the junction where the soft palate, the tongue, and the back of the throat all compete for the same space. When you are awake, the muscles are tight, keeping the airway open. But when you sleep, these same muscles relax, causing the airway to narrow. As the air passes through the narrowed opening, the uvula and the surrounding tissues begin to vibrate, causing a condition known as snoring. If the tongue continues to fall back, it will cause the breathing to become slowed or completely stopped. This is known as obstructive sleep apnea. Sleep apnea can cause fragmented sleep, shorter lifespan, reduced quality of life, and even death. Very interesting. And the problem is, is with obstructive sleep apnea, it can reduce lifespan seven to 15 years depending on severity of the apnea or sleep disordered breathings, as well as depending on how long it's been going on. Not only do you have a reduced lifespan, it's been connected with dementia, with Alzheimer's disease, short-term memory, depression, 
weight gain, the list goes on and on and on. You have a 60% higher risk of cancer. You have a two times as, uh, three times as high of likelihood of, of a stroke with apnea versus the normal population. And 90% of the people who die in their sleep due to a heart attack in their sleep, the root cause is sleep apnea. That makes all the sense in the world. We know that heart attacks happen. Heart attacks happen from stress. But what kind of stress do you have while you're sleeping? And yet we all know of people who have died in their sleep due to a heart attack. You don't have any stress in your, in your sleep unless you're not breathing. Then your heart might be working harder at night than it is during the day. Four good reasons to get obstructive sleep apnea treated as an adult. The problem is, is if you have sleep apnea as an adult, you only have three basic choices. You can do surgery, break the jaw, move it forward, correct it, spread the arches apart, major surgery. That's one way that might work. Another way to, to do it is to cut the uvula out, take away all the tissues alongside the throat and maybe um, take the tonsils, adenoids out. That works for a while, but unfortunately, most of the time that comes back. It's only got a 30 to 50% success rate. Oh, you can do the CPAP, continuous positive airway pressure. That works by keeping the airway open and allowing things to go. And you can wear that for the rest of your life. Or you can do the, the oral sleep appliances. The sleep appliances work as an alternative to the CPAP. It fits in the mouth as a, as a mouth guard and it keeps the jaw forward, allowing you to sleep and breathe at the same time. It's a splint, again, something that you're wearing every night for the rest of your life. Or one more option. Maybe we could consider these things earlier on in life and correct the problem before it actually happens. Tonight we wanna to talk about a crisis. A crisis that is in the American children. When we're looking at all of these things, attention deficit disorder or attention deficit hyperactive disorder, ADHD, bedwetting, difficulty in school, mouth breathing and snoring, restless sleep, delayed or stunted growth. We stop and think about that. Obstructive sleep apnea in a child. What does it affect? Sleep disordered breathing, whether it's obstructive sleep apnea, which is sleep disordered breathing can be the precursor to, if you are getting fragmented sleep in your, in your sleep and you're not getting good quality of sleep, as an adult, it can impact our lives. But as children, it can be just as debilitating and it can affect us for the rest of our lives. I mean, keep a child up all night and see how well he does the next day in school. He's gonna be a little cranky. He's going to be charging all over the place. He's going to be falling asleep while he's sitting there. Because if he's not charging all over the place, he's gonna be sleeping. He's gonna have restless sleep at night. Delayed stunted growth with growth hormone because growth hormone is produced in deep sleep. If you're not able to get the deep sleep, your growth hormone is going to be reduced because the endocrine levels aren't working so well. And with that happening, it's gonna be a problem. Nightmares happening from the REM sleep defects. Asthma. If you're not breathing through your nose, you're breathing through your mouth. If you're breathing through your mouth, you've got a straight pipe that goes right from your mouth straight into the lungs without going through the filtration of the nose, creating all sorts of problems like asthma, chronic allergies, depression. You would think that children, why would they be depressed unless they're not sleeping and their body's so fatigued that they just mentally can't handle whatever it is in their little lives that they need to be handling? dark circles around the eyes and swollen adenoids and tonsils. Again, these things that are inflammatory issues, a lot of which can happen because of sleep disordered breathing. Aggressive behaviors. Again, tired, not sleeping well at night, you're gonna have a hard time dealing with the daytime. Daytime drowsiness. Allergies, not only chronic, but maybe acute. And of course, frequently wakes up at night. Now this is a list of some of the signs and symptoms of sleep disordered breathing in kids. It's estimated that nine out of kids suffer from at least one or more of these symptoms. 
In fact, research has shown in the last 20 years that each of these conditions has one common root cause, sleep disordered breathing. So as you're watching this, you might be thinking about your child or maybe your sister's child. So what is it that we can do? What are the options that are out there? What are the things that we can do if we have kids that are having all of these problems that are going on and we do, and I see them, what are the options that are out there for it? Well, we can put them on drugs, Adderall, other drugs that are out there. Psychiatric testing we can do, um, counseling and therapy. ADHD, of course, we know Ritalin is the, the major one there as well. How about surgery? Sure, we can wait and we can do surgery. Surgeries work if it's uh, tonsils and adenoids as a small child and they're having lots of problems. Getting those tonsils and adenoids out of there will solve it for a while. Getting some sleep studies, certainly. Allergy testing, that's a good idea. Special education and sleep aids. But every single one of these things does not come to the root cause of exactly what's going on. It only masks it. In fact, the conventional treatments all have that in common. They're not treating the root cause of the problem. They're a Band-Aid. They work for the short term, not for the long term. We can mask things and, and get the child to focus better in school or, or to not be running around or to be more cooperative. Why, we can even get him better to get him to where he can sleep better by giving him some sleep aids along the way. Oh, they'll just grow out of bedwetting. Really? Is that the best we have to offer as a medical community? Often, some of these conventional treatments involve several drugs. So we're going to get him wound up, so we got to keep him awake during the day, and then we're going to get him something that, so they can sleep at night. Oh, we're going to give them a medication so that they can get rid of their chronic allergies. But then we're going to have to get them another medication to counteract the side effects of those medications. And the list goes on and on and on. They can be costly, painful, time-consuming, and unfortunately, many times, ineffective. As I've seen this over and over, as I've watched the adults is that the best we can do so that we have to deal with them as adults for the rest of their lives, strapping something over their face, putting something in their mouth? Or is there a better way? Our healthcare system simply doesn't have great solutions to this crisis. They try to do the best they can, but I think there might be a better way. So how can we as dentists be involved with this? Is there something that we are able to do? And I would suggest to you tonight that there is. Our training is in the development of the arches for the teeth and the skeletal development as children that are there. Dentists have the knowledge, the tools to impact the development of the airway to increase the oxygen intake. Because now it's about more than cavities and straight teeth. That's why I am so excited to be a dentist in today's world. It's no longer about the cavities. It's not even any longer about the straight teeth. I used to go in and check in the mouth and I wouldn't look beyond the teeth. And now I begin by looking beyond the teeth to see what that airway looks like, to see what the tonsils are doing, to see how, where the tongue is being placed, to see if the patient is breathing through their nose or not, to look at the eyes and see if there's issues in there. There is a lot we can see, but you know what? The less we know about a condition, the more normal that person appears. Let me state, make, make that statement again. The less we know about a condition, the more normal a person appears. It's about the overall future and well-being of every child. That is what gets me up in the morning and gets me going. Yes, it's exciting to be able to help a patient to be able to get off of disability, to get off of the, to get out of the, the pain that they're having as an adult, to be able to function to the best of their ability as an adult, but we're giving them band-aids. 
when we could be fixing it completely as a child. There's more that we can do. For instance, let's take a look at these two children. On this one, for instance, uh, the one to the left, we can see the young lady in here. She's got a little forward head tilt. She's, if you're having a hard time breathing, you're gonna throw your head forward. If you throw your head forward as a child like that, you're trying to breathe and that forward head posture, that's going to throw you into skeletal pro problems and set up for many chiropractic issues as an adult. Also, you might see the droopy eyes, uh, a allergenic type of a child that's here. I can take a look at that child. Again, the less we know about a condition, the more normal she appears. But if you look closely, you can see the head coming forward. You can see the droopy eyes. You can see the, the look in here of someone that is struggling. Let's take a look at the young man on the other side. You notice the lower lip, it's curled down. In fact, it's got a crease underneath of it that makes the chin look even a little more prominent. Look at his neck, it's short and wide. Look at the eyes and you see the, the, the pooling and the, the dark circles around the eyes. This child is being affected by sleep disorder breathing. Both of them are, and yet they may be going. When the child gets up in the morning, you're like, oh, I know he has a hard time getting up, but he's just not a morning person. Yeah, he's a little lazy in the afternoon. It's just the way it is. You know, he'll grow out of it. Yeah, he's still wet in the bed a little bit, but that's no big deal. You know, a lot of kids do at his age. All the while, the underlying problem never getting addressed. Again, sleep disordered breathing is a big thing. Take a look at these two children, these two young ladies. And one on the left, if we take a look at that, we can see her teeth as she's there. A little forward head tilt again. Look at that chin. The chin is back. The lower mandible, the lower jaw is grown, is not grown, it's underdeveloped. And if that lower jaw is underdeveloped, if you look back and you remember the, the slide that I first gave you with the mannequin, you would realize that as, the, as you begin to relax and the jaw falls back, with that lower jaw being underdeveloped, it's already back, narrowing the airway to start with. And then as it relaxes a little bit, she can be extremely thin and still have serious obstructive sleep apnea as an adult and sleep disordered breathing at this age, creating a lot of those signs and symptoms that you just saw. The young lady to the right. Again, you don't see much of a chin. You see her pulling her teeth together, her lips together. Look at her chin. It looks like it's completely tight as uh, the mentalis, the chin part in there, as it's pulling up. You don't see a nice jawline that is there. Both of these, these young ladies could have a profile that look, could look so much better with such an easy correction, mainly done while they're asleep, believe it or not. We're going to get into that a little bit more. So what are, the, what are some of the epidemics, some of the signs and symptoms of this sleep disordered breathing and sleep deprivation in children? First of all, there's a greater awareness of the severe effects of children's health. I have realized that as I have started treating the adults more and more and more. I can hardly look down an adult's mouth now without asking myself the question, what would have they been like had this been corrected when they were a child? Mouth breathing, breathing causes the mandible and tongue to be displaced backwards and causing reduced airway. So with mouth breathing, it's going to cause for an underdeveloped lower jaw, causing that jaw to stay back in the, uh, narrowing the airway, which can cause then an obstruction in that airway. Habits like finger sucking and abnormal tongue posture and swallowing are all factors that are going to create an underdeveloped upper and lower jaws. Causes of uh, uh, the upper jaw, the cons constriction and upper palate decreasing decreases the airway and for breathing. So all the things that can cause that upper jaw to stay narrow, that's going to trap the lower jaw and it's gonna create underdevelopments of the jaws. And when that happens structurally, skeletally, it's gonna cause all of it to narrow the airway, creating problems for that child, creating then sleep disordered breathing as a child and all the effects that go along with it. Reduced REM sleep affects brain function. It affects the hormone and the immune systems that are in there. So if we're having a problem in the REM sleep and we're not getting it in the corrected area, it can affect growth hormone. 
Therefore, you're going to have a child that is shorter in stature, that's not maturing and not, not processing things the way that other kids do his age. He may be charging around a little bit extra. So I know, let's just put, give him a pill that'll calm that down a little bit. All the while masking the problem, thinking that he'll just end up with that growth spurt. He's just a little late. He's a late bloomer. No, he's not. He's a child who is, who is struggling with sleep and has sleep disordered breathing. This causes multiple behavior and social and body health symptoms. We can change these kids' stars if we recognize it. But unfortunately, the less we know about a condition, the more normal the person appears. So let's just take a look at the normal growth. From ages two to let's say 17, it's really interesting when you see how fast the face grows and this whole skull and the skeleton from the neck up. So there's been research that's shown that at two years old, the face is already 55% developed. And we're not talking about just the face on what you see, we're talking about all the structures, the airway included, all the structures of the jaw, the mandible, the maxilla, the nasal portion of it, the airway that's in here, all of it. By four years old, it's already four years old. It's 75%, 73% in males, 77% in females develops at that age. You see, if we don't catch it early, it gets to be more and more difficult. By the time they're 12, it's 89% developed in males, 94% developed in females. So as you can see, if we're going to affect the structural growth of a child, we need to do it by the time they're age 12. Can we do it a little bit later than that? Somewhat, as long as we're in the growth years, it gets more and more difficult the later we go. So we like to catch it early. The best time to correct a problem is when you see it. And that is exactly what we try to do. In natural growth, the normal growth and development of a face and jaw is downward and forward. The jaw is gonna come down and forward. So if you think about the lower jaw, if it's going down and forward, it's also opening that airway up more and more and more. What if it gets trapped and it can't come forward or it can't come down be because of habits or because the upper jaw is holding it back or for whatever reason it doesn't develop, it's going to keep that airway narrow and we're going to have sleep disordered breathing. So why are there so many of today's children experiencing north, uh, not experiencing normal growth and development? It seems like there has been more and more and more problems along the way. I think the answer may come as we go back in history. When you go back 400 years, or quite honestly, even 100 years, we used to eat natural foods. We used to take stuff like grain, and you're lucky if you could cook it a little bit, or else you just chew it raw. And in so doing, as a young child, every time you're chewing and you're chewing these natural foods, you're developing the arches. That's why when we look at skulls and skeletons from hundreds of years ago, we will find that it was very unusual to find any impacted wisdom teeth. Wisdom teeth that couldn't come in because there wasn't room for them to come in. Almost always they were able to come in. So there was some research that was done on this, a research project that was proven that dietary consistency and toughness promotes proper bone growth. If we do not have the correct consistency and toughness in our diet, it's going to create problems and we're gonna have narrower arches. In fact, soft diets, in, will cause an increase of underdeveloped upper and lower jaws, and it'll cause a rapid rise of mal malocclusion. This research project that went on, it found out taking people that came from a third world country where they didn't have the processed foods, and they looked at the amount of malocclusion or the way that the teeth came in, crooked teeth, or not room for the teeth to come in straight. It looked at that, and it found out that if you take someone from a third world country and they come to the United States, 
And the next generation, their generation, their kids, when they come here, their kids, the first generation will have 50% more crowding than they had in their mouth. This goes on. You go to the second generation, to their grandkids, and you're going to find out that they had 70% more crowding in their mouth than what it did. You can't say that's genetics. It's the same genetics. The only thing that's changed here is the consistency of the food, and they're going from raw foods to refined foods. You go to the third generation, and they have 85% more malocclusion, more crowding of the teeth in that third generation than what the great-grandparents had. It is a big deal. So when we see things like the nice Gerber ad here that says, Graduates Puffs, the nutritious snack that melts in the baby's mouth. Sounds good. The baby loves it. Baby doesn't have to do any work. Baby doesn't even have to chew. And yet, it's the very chewing, it's the very action that, uh, that is allowing that baby to develop the arches, the airway, and the skeletal structure that she or he needs to be, be able to develop correctly. Prolonged use of pacifiers, more than six months creates underdeveloped upper and lower jaws. Prolonged nipple uh, bottle feeding, again, beyond six months, it's a big deal. So we have our kids. We start them off with a soft diet. We pamper them along the way. We try our best to raise them in the way that they can. And we, when they're, when they're not getting the, time, the sleep that they're getting or they're, they're not getting the grades we want, we get them extra help. All the while, we're not recognizing the core of the problem. Sleep disordered breathing due to skeletal defects that can happen all the way back to birth. So let's take a look at a few kids here. Here's a, a beautiful picture of a, a young child, five years old. You can look at all the spacing that's going on in between all those front teeth. Looks really great. If you take a look at the and look at both of these arches, there's spacing in there. Now that's supposed to be there at age five because we're getting ready for those six-year teeth to come in. You get those incisors coming in and the six-year molars coming in back, there has to be room for those. We have to have the development of the arches. If those teeth are, are really tight and there's no spaces in between their teeth, may look really great at five years old, but when those permanent teeth start coming in and they're coming in crooked, we're going to know why because there wasn't space enough for them. So we correctly need to have that space at age five getting ready for those adult teeth coming in. We look at the airway, the development of the airway. There's three major aspects of this airway. You have the nasal pharynx, which is the, up in the nasal cavity and all the airway that corrects in there. If you have a, low, uh, a narrow upper arch, the maxilla, the upper arch, if it's narrow, it's going to constrict the space for the airway, creating then nasal problems and creating a person to not breathe through their nose. A lot of times you expand that arch out It'll allow then the roof of the mouth, the floor of the sinus to drop down and for things to be correctly formed in that area. A second part of that, the middle component there is the oropharynx. That is where the tongue is at, where the teeth are at, and where the swallowing is. If that oropharynx, if you have an underdeveloped lower jaw, that's going to, to cause that lower jaw to go back, narrowing that or oropharynx and having problems with breathing in that area. And then of course, you have the laryngeal, the pharynx in there, and the lower part of the, of the throat and airway that is going in there. When we got into that area that is in there, again, those are all skeletal areas that are correctly formed during the young years of a person's life as they are there. If we look at the maxilla in here, and a nice picture of a skull in here, you can see the maxilla is where the upper teeth are formed. They fit into that area. And and if you have a narrow arch, a narrow maxilla that is in there, then that can sh it has been proven that that can cause sleep disordered breathing. In fact, um, the results suggest from this study that uh, if we expand the upper arch, it improves sleep disordered breathing in patients uh, with the upper and, air and lower airway constriction and can be a valid treatment. So just sometimes expanding that upper arch can help. But that's not just the end of it. If that's a correction. That's a width correction. But what about the other direction that's in there? There's more to it than just that. Let's take a look at a side view of these patients. So if we take a look at this, 
at, um, at these two, uh, at a normal airway, the one on the left, which is a normal airway for a 10 year old. And you can see right behind the teeth, you'll see a dark line and uh, in front of the vertebrae behind the teeth, you'll see that dark line, you see how wide that is. That is actually the airway that is in there. Now look at the restricted airway, same area, look at that behind the teeth in front of the vertebrae and what you see in there is the narrowed airway. Imagine, ask yourself, which one of these two airways do you think is going to allow that child to breathe the best with? Obviously, the one with the normal airway. When that jaw, that lower jaw is restricted and it's back too far, then it will cause a narrowing of that airway. Then when the child is sleeping, the muscles relax, he can't breathe, he has to get kicked out of that deep sleep to a lighter level of sleep, maybe woke up completely, all the while creating him to not get the proper correct sleep at night, creating problems with the endocrine system, the hormone system, as well as the immune system, as well as many, many things that go along the line that we've been talking about. So again, when we take a look at a normal airway, look at this, this young lady's chin. You see how prominent that is and it goes back into the throat, a nice, beautiful profile. And then when we look at the picture to the right, the underdeveloped one, you see how that chin just kind of flows right into the neck? That's because it's underdeveloped. It not only creates an airway problem, it creates also a profile problem and many, many things along the way that we'll talk more about. So what does your child's airway look like? Is there a problem with this and is there some things we can do to assess that particular thing? I'd like to let you see a little picture, this is a little bit hard to watch, and it goes for just a couple of minutes here, but take a look at this young child sleeping in a car seat and see here what happens and imagine what's going on in his body as he is trying to sleep. Notice the open mouth, notice the red cheeks, notice the puffiness of the eyes, the sweat that's coming down on this young child as he is just simply trying to sleep here. We'll see if we can get this to play. He's holding it. He's holding it. He's holding it. He's holding it. He's still holding his breath. Now he's going to gulp again. There he goes. That was it again. Hard to watch. Look at the sweat this kid. Imagine what his body is trying to do in here. He's holding. He's holding. He's trying. There he goes. So this has been three minutes and 15 seconds, and you can see how many episodes he's had of not getting calm breaths in. Now, watch what happens when I take his jaw and I just bring it forward. If I can, let's see if I can. That opens the airway. Just bring his airway forward. Notice before he was breathing through his mouth. Now it's through his nose. Now listen to the quiet breathing. There we go. Now he's breathing through his nose. And I grab his airway, I'm opening his airway, just pulling his jaw forward ever so slightly. And now he's breathing through his nose quietly. His mouth is a little bit open, but he's breathing through his nose. Just by here how quietly he's breathing, you don't hear him anymore. And all I did is gently bring his jaw forward. Mouth breathing causes the jaw to fall back and the jaw open a little bit and it can create an airway constriction creating these problems. This child, still a toddler, trying to sleep, his body doing everything it can to, to grow, his brain functioning as best as it can, all of the issues and all the functions going in there. And if this is happening night after night after night, imagine what he's gonna be like by the time he's 20. We can change their stars. It is so exciting to be able to see 
and to be able to to be able to see these patients to be in this kind of condition and yet within a year later to be able to be in a position where they're able to sleep normally where they go through the growth functions correctly and their body is changing so dramatically very very exciting so as we're looking at this with underdeveloped dental jaws what causes those underdeveloped dental jaws again in review extended bottle feeding and pacifier use causes it causes poor tongue position and abnormal swallowing soft diets processed foods poor habits like thumb sucking and lip and biting and and tongue thrust these type of things all of these causing underdeveloped jaws and when that happens it will cause a compromised airway when you have a compromised airway it causes mouth breathing and snoring because you're not be able to breathe through your mouth or through your nose you have to breathe you're going to have your mouth open if your mouth is open it's drying everything out inside creating the tonsils to be inflamed and the adenoids it's going to cause the jaw to fall back you're going to be having then the snoring and that goes along with that the the swollen adenoids and tonsils low tongue position and tongue thrust if you're not able to breathe through your nose the tongue has to stay in the floor of the mouth the way the upper arch grows is with the root, with the tongue getting to the roof of the mouth spreading the upper arch widthwise and without that happening it traps everything including the lower jaw keeps it all tra trapped creating then underdeveloped dental arches which leads to crowding and crooked teeth having a jaw that's that has a, a jaw too far back and we need to have it coming forward so that it looks like the, 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 like the, the child is buck toothed. It's not that the upper teeth are out too far, it's that the lower jaw isn't connected to it, it isn't, it isn't grown up to its corrected position. Having a bite that's overclosed where the chin and the nose are too close together, creating the lip to curl and go down, creating then problems with, with that whole area, creating then uh, a, a, uh, an overbite correcting and, and having an, a, a crossbite where the upper arch is literally narrower than the lower arch. The number of people I treat with TMJ problems that have crossbites is phenomenal. All of these could have been corrected had we been able to catch this in the, in the development years. All these compromised airways are then going to cause sleep disordered breathing. Sleep disordered breathing is going to show its, its ugly head in restless sleep and arousals. It's going to show its ugly head in ADD and ADHD. Then they're going to have to be put on Ritalin or Adderall. They're going to go to their, to the, at, at lunchtime to the teacher and have to get that little pill as everybody else goes out to play, making them be convinced that they're not like everybody else. They can't function and they can't focus well in school. So what happens? Oh, they have to have the extra school. Why, they're just not quite as, as smart as everybody else. It's not that at all. The poor child simply can't breathe. If we can correct the sleep disordered breathing, we can correct all of these issues. Bedwetting. If a child isn't able to get the sleep that they need, and they get into a position where their body is completely relaxed, it is so exhausted, it is not going to wake up for something as minor as bedwetting. Chronic allergies from breathing through your mouth instead of through your nose. Nightmares with the REM sleep that is being defected and the arousals that are coming in and everything that's happening, and it's just not working correctly, creating then the nightmares. Daytime drowsiness, if you're not sleeping through the night, you can't seize the day. You can't do what you want to in the day because you're having problems at night. No child deserves any of this. All these children, when these can be corrected, why wouldn't we correct them when we see them? Aggression and defiance and anger, all of these things, it's not that they've got bad parents. It's not that they're a bad child. They don't feel good. Get them the sleep that they need. Get rid of the sleep disordered breathing and we can change their stars. And that includes difficulty in school. Sleep disordered breathing is a crisis in America and it can be corrected. The only problem is the less we know about a condition, the more normal the person appears. So what can we do to fix this as dentists? this epidemic? Actually, a lot. We can literally fix it. Let me show you how.
Here's what we can do with Healthy Start. I am so excited to team up with Healthy Start with Koala. With Koala Kids, we want to take children. We want to be able to correct the problems before it comes, becomes a serious problem as an adult. If we can correct them when they're kids, we can have straight teeth, we can have better profiles, we can have airways that are open, and we can correct the rest of these, these issues that we just talked about with sleep disordered breathing. So I am so thrilled to be able to team up with Healthy Start. Dr. Bergerson is such a, has such an amazing program that is out here, and I'm thrilled to be a part of that. In fact, as he said over here, over 3 million cases nationwide, we already talked about that, and the amazing international patents that he has out there. Um, quite an amazing individual. What can Healthy Start do? Well, it expands the upper, the, up, the, uh, the arches, the dental arches, both the upper arch and the lower arch, growing them, getting them to the correct profile so that it's the way it was naturally supposed to be. What else can it do? It can establish nasal breathing. So it stops the airway, the mouth breathing that is in there. It discourages and eliminates mouth breathing by using their habit appliances. And by the way, most of this is done while they sleep, as young as sometimes even two years old. It's amazing what these, what these appliances can do while the child is sleeping. It discourages mouth breathing, as we said, and nasal breathing prepares the air for optimal assimilation by the lungs, filters and warms and moisturizes the lungs. You think about that. If you're a mouth breather, it would be like having, having a heater in your house and you take the filter out of the house and you don't have the filter in there, which filters all of the, all of the things and the, the, the problems that are in the air. So if you're taking the filtration out of, out of the, the heater, then you're just filtering bad air all the way through the house. We would never think of pulling the filters out of our heating system and yet that's what mouth breathers are doing when they're breathing in. This is a straight pipe. They are eliminating the filtration system, they're eliminating the air warming system, and they're eliminating the moisturizing system. Therefore, they have inflamed tonsils, they have dry throats, and they have all sorts of, of problems that, that creates inflammation and allergies and asthma that comes along with this. What else can we do with Healthy Start? It trains the tongue with the habit um, um, appliances that are in there. It strengthens and conditions the tongue. It repositions the tongue in the upward position. Remember we said, if you're a mouth breather, your tongue is gonna be on the floor of the mouth, not allowing it to get to the roof of the mouth. The way the arch is developed widthwise, the upper arch is the tongue getting and pushing laterally against the arch, widening the arch. If you're not able to breathe through your nose, then you're gonna be a mouth breather and you're gonna keep that tongue on the floor of the mouth. So it retrains that jaw, that, that tongue, to get to the roof of the mouth instead of the floor, floor of the mouth. And it promotes proper swallowing and speech uh, positioning of these jaws. It eliminates bad habits, thumb sucking, uh, tongue thrust, reverse swallow, and eliminates open bites, among many, many other things. And the great thing is, the majority of it is done while you sleep. And depending on the age of the, of, the, of, the, of the patient, if they get older, they may have to wear these appliances a little bit longer, sometimes two, hour, two hours, not more, not, never more than four hours a day and all night. But the majority of it is at night. They're comfortable, easy to use, and it eliminates a whole bunch of problems. It advances the mandible to correct over jet with the, the horizontal correction. It increases the airway and it can correct most of the symptoms caused by sleep deprivation. That's why I'm doing it. It encourages proper face and body growth. We're gonna show you some other pictures that are in here that are gonna show you these differences, it's pretty cool. It corrects most orthodontic diagnostic, diagnosis to a class one, to a proper position of the upper and lower jaw. So it corrects the skeletal issues and it harmonizes the face so that the face, the profile is correct. We don't have a, a pay, a, an adult with, with a chin that's only, that's back too far and it ruins the profile of the individual. It corrects it all. It, it puts them into an ideal overbite, the vertical and the horizontal, 
uh, positioning of the lower jaw, has proper intercuspation of the, of the dentition, the way the teeth fit together, and it allows for all 28 teeth to come in by the time you're age 12, which is all the teeth except for the wisdom teeth, which are gonna come in a little later, 17, 18. But it allows for these teeth to come in in their proper position and actually have room to come in. It reduces and eliminates future relapse. Why? Think about it this way. If you were gonna build a house, you would wanna start with a correct foundation, right? One that fits the size of the house. So if we're going to wait till age 12, when almost all of the facial growth has already happened in that individual, and then we're going to just straighten teeth, what do you think is going to happen once they're straight? They're going to relapse. In fact, it's proven that you have 70% relapse after braces. That's why you have to wear retainers after braces. People say, how long do you want to have, do you, do you have to wear these retainers? I like to tell people they have to wear the retainer as long as they want straight teeth. If they don't want straight teeth, stop wearing the retainer because that's exactly what happens. When we do it this way, we're correcting the skeletal issues and then when the teeth come in, they naturally come in, those ligaments form around that tooth and locks the tooth to the bone in that corrected position and there is no need for this other correction and it eliminates the relapse from these, from these cases. It reduces the chance of orthodontic treatment in the future. We're gonna show you some cases here on this. Let's take a look at this particular one. All of these are done with no braces whatsoever. Look at the profile difference in this young child. So Michael, age nine, you can see his, his lower lip kind of curling back, see the prominent chin that's, that's curled under there, and you can see there at age nine that it's, that it's back. Look at that, the whole, the whole lower jaw profile is almost missing. It looks like it just melts right into the neck. And here he is after treating, after being treated with Healthy Start, age 14, going through the appliances, and here he is with a perfect profile. Now, it would have been nice to maybe start Michael a little earlier than age nine. A lot of times we like to, if we could correct that at age five, he may not have to wear that anytime except for at night while he's sleeping. The older we get, the more daytime wear we have to have. But look at the profile difference. I can guarantee you that Michael at age 14, if he hadn't been treated, his jawline and his chin line would have looked just like it does when he's at age nine. Now, which one of those two would you rather have your son look like? Of course, the one to the right, the healthy start one, is a much better profile and corrected. If we wait till you're adult, the only way you're going to get that to, to, to have a chin that looks like that is surgery and, and wiring the jaw shut and a major, major surgery. The airway, let's take a look and see what all that takes, what that looks like. Here's the airway. So here he is at age nine. Look at that airway, the difference between the back of the teeth and the skeleton in there as we, we look at the spine. And right in between there, you can see that dark line. That's the airway. Look how narrow that is. And then when you look at that same airway, you see the vertebrae, you see the teeth, and that airway, the dark line in between that, that's the airway at age 14. What's the difference between those two? Growing that lower jaw forward and getting the corrected position. So here we go, this is his teeth. Again, at age nine, you can see the picture of where his teeth were at. He had that big, deep bite. Look at his lower teeth when he bites down. His lower teeth are all actually touching the gum on the inside of his upper arch, his lower, his lower teeth are. And so he was, he was way overclosed. When you open that bite up, at age 14, look how straight those teeth are. Look how good this is. No braces. That is an amazing result. So, which one of these two kids? Look at the healthier Michael that is in here. Beautiful smile, nice 14-year-old, and I can guarantee you that that is a completely different profile than he would have had had we not gone through the Healthy Start system. This is 12 months in Healthy Start system right here. You can see the before and after, picture to the left before, pictures to the right, the after, and what it actually looks like in going through these. It's guided growth. It guides the growth of the teeth into the correct position. It guides the skeleton to the corrected position, balancing the bite, balancing the airway, balancing this, the nose, and balancing the teeth all at one time. An amazing system. 
sleep disordered breathing and ADHD. Let's talk about that for just a moment as we're beginning to run out of time. ADHD, attention deficit disorder, whether it's with hyperactivity or not, keep any child up most of the night and let's see how well they do the next day. So they're charging all over. They're in a bad mood. They're irritable. They don't get along with the other kids. They can't focus. They're a little shorter in stature. And so what do we do? Well, we have to help them focus, right? So we get something on there. So we'll put them on Adderall or Redolin. Good choice. I guess it's better than them charging all over the place and never learning anything. But maybe that's just masking the system. What if we could actually correct the problem? Research project that was done, taking 11,000 kids, working with them with six years, for six years. And the study uh, uh, was published in a journal, a pediatrics for a journal in 2012. Let's find out what, this, what the results were. The key results of the study was sleep disordered breathing increases risk for AD, ADHD, ADD by at least 50%. So if we take the kids with ADHD and we get rid of the problems, it would be an assumption that we would be able to eliminate ADHD in 50%. Worth checking out? I think so. Let's talk about bedwetting for a minute. If you're not able to sleep through the night, your body's so exhausted, if it finally gets in the position where it can actually sleep it is not going to be woke up for something as minor as wetting the bed. Research project showing that reduced oxygen probably interferes with the REM sleep, the rapid eye movement sleep. This is a sleep area where the brain is, is scrubbing and it's doing all of its job. It's also where the endocrine and, and the immune system is, is functioning at its optimum level. It reduces the oxygen, which is going to interfere with the REM sleep, which affects the neurological hormones and symptoms, which probably interfere with bladder control. They'll just grow out of it. We can just let it go. It's not a big deal, really. Or we can correct it, mainly while the child sleeps. Let's look at some other case histories that are in here. So here's a young child, age five. And you can see him at age seven. Look at the overbite that is in there on, on the age five and the, the picture to the right. Look at the teeth. Look at that lower jaw, how far back it is. And look at it at age 12 where we're at. Here's another child that's in here, a young, young boy here, 12 years old. And you can see his lower chin and his prominence. Look at the overbite that is on that one. And, and look how he's overclosed his nose and his chin closer together. Look at the profile at age 14. Look at the way those teeth are coming together. It's beautiful, perfect, no braces, and no relapse. Here's another child, again, age eight. Take a look at this, very deep bite. Why his, his bite is so deep, when you look at this with the, with the at eight years old, his upper teeth are almost completely covering his lower teeth. And if you look down, look how we open that bite up, bite up vertically that we opened it up so his nose and his chin are a little further apart. He doesn't have that curl. If you look at that picture on the, and, and the left at the, uh, the eight-year-old, the actual facial picture, and you can see the chin, see the crease that's down between his chin and his teeth? That's from the overclosure of that jaw. When you open that jaw up and you allow those teeth to go to where they naturally want to go at age 14, no crease, chin's much better, great result. Great profile. Healthy start changes lives. That's the point. We can change their stars, whether we get them at age four, or maybe even as young as two, or we correct them at age 10. Or if it's a little later than that, we've seen some in age 14 still getting corrected. But the point is, we can make their lives so much better with such little effort to be done while they're asleep. I wanna end by showing you a picture, a little video. This is a five minute video about Connor. Take a look at this. As you're listening for the, at this, 
Think about your child. What would you do if you were Connor's mom?
You know, I got into the treatment of obstructive sleep apnea because I have a very close friend. His wife worked for me. And for 15 years, I treated his, his, he had periodontal problems and we would see him every three months to keep his gums and teeth in good shape. But I never looked beyond the mouth, beyond the teeth. And one day his wife went home and uh, he had worked the night shift the night before as a police officer. And she came home and she found him dead in bed from an apparent heart attack. It was soon after that that I took my first course in the treatment of obstructive sleep apnea. And it hit me like a ton of bricks when I realized big neck, thick tongue, airway problems, asthmatic, lots of things. But the less you know about a condition, the more normal the person appears. I was fighting back tears. In fact, I wasn't fighting them back. It was a long trip home on the airplane. And I decided that from then on, that was the last time I was going to look into a person's mouth and not look beyond the teeth. I'm taking this, and we have de developed the Koala Kids program, partnering with Healthy Start, because I want to change lives. I don't want any more heartaches like my friend, two kids in the prime of his life. So I would like to invite you, if you're watching this, to come in and discuss your situation, your child's situation, personally with me. We are offering a free airway assessment, an occlusal assessment, and a discussion at our office. All you have to do is call our office, we'll get you in. We'll talk about your situation, we'll show you the orthopedic appliances, they're amazing. We'll talk about your situation fully. And we'll do it free of charge because I believe in what I'm doing. So give us a call tomorrow. We'd love to see you for your child. Or if the obstructive sleep apnea is something you think that you may be considering yourself, I'll extend that same offer to you as an adult. So give us a call. And Kathy, I wanna thank you so much for inviting me to do this, giving me the opportunity of being able to join in in this amazing, amazing journey of the treatment of sleep disordered breathing. Dr. Willie, it's been a brilliant conversation with you tonight. And I was reminded that this is the most purposeful job I've ever had, being able to tell this story. In fact, to the point that if I could do it all over again, if I could choose my career, I would be a dentist and do this. It also reminds me that I've been blessed for the last two years because I've been able to sit in and also document the lectures that have been going on. And I know that this is the way that we get the information out. Because how many times did I sit in those lectures saying, parents don't know this. Oh my gosh, they need to hear this. Oh, the way they said that. Everything that you said tonight, I was on the edge of my seat listening because you painted this picture so beautifully, so articulately that no parent ever hears this, but you have to hear the whole story and just doesn't get it because it all makes sense. That's so. Right. As we look at this, at our first step taken with your beautiful overview, the next step for a parent is to have this sleep questionnaire, to go to your office, to call your number, as you said, and really, really take a look at the way their child is sleeping so they can carry that information into the discussion with a real observation. We don't want you to hesitate. You can call the office, 844-KID-HEALTHY, get more information, go to the website, see a number of videos, learn a little bit more, but Dr. Willie, my last question for you, because you're doing this in your office with a team mm -hmm. of people that share your passion and understanding, what is it like for the entire team to recognize, as you say, how you are going to change a child's stars? It is absolutely amazing. Uh, we are all passionate about this. It is so exciting to be able to take an individual. I got to tell you, it's exciting to take an adult. We have five adults that we're in 
that, that were, had permanent disability, we've been able to get them out working full time again. We have people that have been there that are just literally in tears, hugging us for what we've been able to do to them as an adult, but as a child. They've got their whole life ahead of them. How much greater even for that with pediatric sleep to be able to do these appliances, to do pediatric uh, development and, and guided airway, so much better. Very excited about it. My staff is excited about it. And we love treating all the way from age two to 92 and everything in between. Once a parent knows this, they cannot unknow it. And what a great education and introduction that we had from you, Dr. Willie. We will, of course, be able to share this because it was recorded. And the people who were on and with us tonight can share this with other friends and family. And I just am thrilled that we have the highest caliber doctors on the Healthy Start Orthotain team. And Dr. Willie, you are a great example of the passion, the purpose, and the knowledge that you've imparted with us tonight. Well, thank you, Kathy, and thank you for giving me the opportunity of sharing. Well, it was a great pleasure, and I want to thank the parents who tuned in to be with us, any adult who tuned in. Also, and never to be left out, is the man who's changed the world, and that is Dr. Earl Bergerson. And we thank you for what you've developed for children all over our planet. I want to say thank you to Susie Lafredo, who's handling all the operations technically behind the scenes. And so for all of Healthy Start, Dr. Willie and myself, Kathy Turner, thank you for joining us, and good night. Thank you. Good night.